This is the Riverhawk Report. The UMass Lowell Hockey Riverhawks getting ready for the playoffs. UMass Lowell will visit Maine for a best of three series to open the Hockey East postseason this coming weekend. The series starts on Friday night. The Riverhawks took three out of four points from the nationally ranked University of Vermont this past weekend to finish in a three-way tie for third place. The tiebreaker system gave UMass Lowell the fifth seed and put them on the bus to Orono. That said, the Riverhawks do appear ready for the postseason and the various challenges that will come with that. They trailed in both games during the weekend against Vermont and showed a resilience that bodes well for the future. I like the way we played tonight. We played really well. You know, I thought we had them on their heels pretty much all night. We did everything we wanted to. We turned the puck over a lot, and, and it looked like their goalie was really fighting the puck, too. There was a ton of shots breaking off them. We had a lot of chances dancing around the cage, but, uh, you know, I'm very pr- proud of how these guys played. We we really took it to them over both games this weekend. That is head coach Blaze McDonald. The first night, the Riverhawks trailed 2-1 in the second period and then shifted into overdrive. Corey Felitti tied it with a goal. Ben Holmstrom put the Riverhawks ahead, and Chris Auger put the game away with an insurance goal. And then an empty net tally late in the third period. Scott Campbell had started the scoring with a first period goal. And then I really like how we responded. We're opportunistic. Great play by Felitti. Uh, and I, I think that was kind of the way we played. Once we got an opportunity, we took advantage of it, and then our, our game really took off from there, and we played the way we wanted to play through the second and third period. Now sent up ice by Hutton to Valerani into the attack zone. Valerani to Redmore near the net. Redmore sends it across. Shot score! It just trickled in. It will be Scott Campbell's goal, and the Riverhawks lead 1-0. Pretty pass by Riley. Well, he doesn't Redmore put any mustard on it as he sent it up the boards, put it on McCarthy's stick. McCarthy, broken up, opportunity, Felitti. Breakaway, Felitti, in on goal, Felitti, shot, score! Corey Felitti ties it. A race for the puck, it's not going to be icing. Patrick Say ties up a man, puck comes loose, Say's got it, in front, Felitti, backhander, score! Riverhawks take the lead at 3-2. Felitti got the backhander, I think that went in. If not, it was knocked in by Ben Holstrom, who followed it up. Riverhawks take a 3-2 Now right boards, this is Valerani. Campbell down low, holds, forced a man down. Top of the slot, OJ. His shot, score! Riverhawks, a power play goal! A 4-2 lead! One man out of the box, OJ is out of the box, and the puck cleared to center ice. McKenzie loses it to OJ toward the open net. Chris OJ shoots and scores! It's 5 2 Riverhawks! And that may be the one. Turn out the lights. The 5 2 win Friday night guaranteed the Riverhawks a playoff spot. Saturday was about positioning. And again, the Riverhawks trailed in the second period but responded. Scott Campbell scored to tie it. It was the fourth consecutive game in which the banged up Campbell has found the back of the net. He has scored goals in six of his last eight games. He is hot at a time of the year when it is most important to be hot. Yeah, Scott's, uh, you know, he, he's a tough player. He plays hard. He's very talented. He's got a lot of different dimensions to his game. And and uh, when he gets his confidence going, you know, he's a big body. He can be very, very effective. Great penalty killer for us. Great face-off guy. Terrific on the power play. Um, you know, he really does it all. And, you know, I can see him playing his best hockey from this point forward. Just crunch time, eh? And, you know, nothing, nothing you, can't, you can't hold anything back now. And, uh, you know, fortunately for me, it's been a couple, you know, minor bumps and bruises and that. And, uh, you know, everybody experiences them. Artie's been able to fix me up, uh, you know, along with a lot of the other guys. And, uh, you know, credit to all the guys for coming out and battling. And, uh, you know, we got ourselves in the playoffs. We're giving ourselves a chance. Campbell toward the net. Campbell slides it across. Shot by Daner. Save is made. Rebound. Knocked away. We're back to five on five. Daner to Campbell. Shot. Score! And we're tied on the goal of peace. You know, you're good players. You can tell who they are because when the moments become greater and the stage is bigger, they end up elevating their game. And with that, usually brings some people with them. You know, he's been playing really, really well. Corey felitti has been playing well. We've got some defensemen playing great. Daner and Goers are just fantastic. So we've got a lot of guys going, and uh, that's a good thing for us as we head into the playoffs. Saturday's final was 1-1, a tie. The Riverhawks, with that well-earned point, finished the regular season in a three-way tie for third place. The tiebreaker gave them the fifth seed in that 
that means next stop, Orono, Maine. The Riverhawks have won two of their last three games in Maine's Alfond Arena. Maine coach Tim Whitehead told a media conference call he respects the Invaders. They play really well as a team, most importantly. They've got a great fast-break offense and special teams are very solid. They've got threats on the power play. They're, they're, they're strong on the PK. They've got a couple real good senior goalies who uh, certainly aren't going to give you many... Uh, soft goals. As far as, you know, specific guys, you know, Felitti's pretty much had our number for four years now. He's uh, he's quite good, and I know Campbell's a heck of a player, too, and Holmstrom and Worthington, Valerani, you know, they got a lot of good hockey players uh, up front, and then, I, you know, Daner, Shaw, Edwards, I mean, they got a real nice core at D. Without getting into the details, goaltending has become an issue at Maine. Whitehead says team defense will be the key. You know, we're very determined to play great team defense. We know we got a big challenge in Lowell coming in. They're a real strong team and very talented talented and experienced and, and so on. So we're confident actually in, in Wilson and Sermon that, you know, they've been playing much better lately. Mean goes into the playoffs having dropped four of their last five, six of their last eight. Riverhawk head coach Blaze McDonald told that same media conference call his veteran hockey club has been through a great deal over the last several years and hopes those experiences have prepared the team for what lies we ahead. talk about being in close games, you can have watched it, but once you've experienced it, there's no, there's no way you can duplicate that. You know, it's a tangible experience. We hope that we use that wisdom playing in a tough place like Maine. You know, we've had success recently in the playoffs, which have been, you know, we've had a good experience last year. We, you know, we took B to the three games two years ago. So that's uh, something that we'll lead on a little bit. This Riverhawk team includes 12 seniors. They came to the program at a time when the future was a question mark. I, I think, you know, going through that difficult times really helped these guys, you know, understand the margin of error, understand what it takes to, to a little bit more to get over the top. And we talked a lot about that through their careers. And to their credit, they've worked really hard. They haven't forgotten where they came from and they don't feel privileged or entitled to be where they are. They know that it's, it's a lot of hard work. The Hockey East playoffs begin Friday, UMass Lowell at UMaine. It is a best of three series. And that's the Riverhawk Report. <laughs>